hello friends so in this section we will discuss different pressures in lungs so this is a very basic topic of respiratory physiology okay so let's start there are three three main pressures that we have to discuss one is called as the intrapleural pressure other is called as the intrapulmonary pressure or the intraalveolar pressure and the third one will be the difference of these two pressures okay now this intrapleural pressure we denote it as pip and intrapulmonary pressure or intraalveolar pressure is denoted by p alv okay this is the intraalveolar pressure so let's try to understand these two okay so first i'll be explaining intrapleural pressure with the help of this diagram okay this is a diagram as you can clearly see this is the lung tissue and this part is the chest wall okay this is the chest wall okay now so this pleura here the violet one this is the visceral pleura and this one is the parietal pleura okay these are the two layers of the pleura so uh, if i take this section so here it will be clearly explained okay so this is the chest wall and this is the wall of the lungs okay and these are the two pleura one and two the pressure in between these two is called as the intrapleural pressure okay here the pressure that's present in this space is called as intrapleural pressure now this intrapleural pressure it will always be negative it's always negative okay now the reason uh, it's very simple so this is the chest wall this chest wall has a tendency to go outwards okay it has a tendency to expand its natural tendency is to expand and this is because of the property of elasticity so elasticity this chest wall has tendency to go outwards and the lung tissue it has tendency to go inwards this is because of the presence of elastic recoil and because of presence of surface tension okay it has tendency to go inwards now because of these two forces uh, negative pressure is created in between in this space which is called as a intrapleural pressure so it's because of this negative pressure that these two actually remain in con close to each other they do not separate from each other okay so this is the intrapleural pressure so it will always be negative it will never be zero or positive under normal circumstances now let's try to understand the variations of intra intrapleural pressure during inspiration and during expiration okay so at rest the value of intrapleural pressure is this that's minus four centimeters of water and these pressures are uh, they are relative to the atmospheric pressure okay that means zero doesn't mean zero pressure it means zero atmosphere means zero with respect to atmospheric pressure that means it's actually equal to atmospheric pressure okay so here the intrapleural pressure at rest will be minus four minus four millimeters of mercury and during inspiration okay once we inspire the chest wall it tends it goes outwards it expands okay so the space here will be more and this pressure will become more negative okay the pressure will decrease decrease and become more negative till the end of inspiration and then during expiration the opposite will happen okay now this will again go towards the lung tissue and the space will decrease so it will again increase and till it again reaches its uh, initial value that's minus four okay so this this is the intrapleural pressure it always remains negative okay it's always negative now let's go to another pressure which is called as the intrapulmonary or the intraalveolar pressure okay so this is the curve for intraalveolar pressure we'll try to study this with the help of a separate diagram okay so see as you can see this is the alveoli and these are the gas molecules present in the alveoli okay as you can see the first point here intra the alveolar pressure here it says that alveolar pressure is equal to zero but this is the relative pressure okay this is intra alveolar pressure but relative to atmospheric pressure Atmos that means it will here be equal to the atmospheric pressure not zero okay now during inspiration okay first it keeps on decreasing so why does it decrease because during inspiration okay let's say here it contains one two three four five six molecules of air and once inspiration starts the the alveoli the wall of alveoli starts to expand okay so the volume increases but still there are only six molecules present that's same that means the volume increases and the pressure is going to decrease because of Boyle's law pressure is inversely proportional to volume so this pressure it keeps on decreasing it's because of Boyle's law 
boils now okay now from this point now this point onwards now air will start entering okay there were only six molecules now more molecules start entering okay as you can see there are a lot of molecules so because of these molecules the pressure is now going to increase okay it will increase and it will keep on increasing till it equalizes with the atmospheric pressure okay this till it becomes equal with the atmospheric pressure so here again it reaches to the atmospheric pressure now during expiration during the initial phase this pressure keeps on increasing why does it keep on increasing because during expiration the alveoli they start decreasing in size so the volume decreases but still all the gas molecules are present here so this increases the pressure so pressure increases here now from this point when the when the walls they are further compressed now the air molecules actually start going out and once they start going out the pressure suddenly decreases and again it keeps on decreasing till it normalizes with the atmospheric pressure okay so again it decreases and here becomes equal to the atmospheric pressure so this is the intrapulmonary or the intraalveolar pressure now let's go back to previous diagram so initially it's zero with respect to, again it's it's relative to the atmospheric pressure that means it's equal to atmospheric pressure then during inspiration as the alveoli expand it decreases then gas molecules enter it again increases and reaches and reaches back to the atmospheric pressure then as the alveoli start decreasing in size due to compression it increases and then air goes out and again the pressure equalizes and becomes equal to atmospheric pressure so this is the alveolar pressure okay now let's move to the third pressure which is actually the difference between these two pressures that's the difference between intrapulmonary pressure and the intraalveolar pressure which is called as the transpulmonary pressure okay this is called as a transpulmonary pressure that is the difference between these two and this pressure is actually responsible for inflation of lungs okay this is the pressure which is responsible for inflation of alveoli because here both the factors are taken into consideration the chest wall as well as the factors related to the lungs okay this is the pressure that is actually responsible for inflation of alveoli so that's all about these three basic pressures so we have intrapleural pressure intrapulmonary pressure and the transpulmonary pressure